This is a video on 4.2, which is trigonometric ratios and special angles. Now in grade 12, we're going to be dealing with the same types of questions we saw in grade 11. The only difference is we're actually now going to be in radians instead of degrees. So go grab your calculator and I want you to turn it on. At the top of your screen should be a D. I assume you're on degrees already. So D stands for degrees. And what I want you to do now is press sine 165 and press equals. I got this kind of an answer. I rounded to about four decimal places and I indicated that I did round my answer with my approximation dot. Okay, now I want you to figure out how to change your calculator to radians mode. You're going to know that it's on radians if on the screen, instead of the D for degrees, you're going to have an R. Now my calculator has a mode button. You're just going to have to learn whatever works for your calculator, how to change it from degrees to radians. Okay, but when you're in radian mode and you put sine 165 and you press equals again, you're actually going to get a completely different answer. So it's important to know when you're on degrees mode and when you're on radians mode. In grade 12, we're going to be mainly in radians. Um, just be careful when you're on tests because if you're in the wrong mode, you're probably going to have the wrong answers. Okay, now number two, write the following in radians. I already showed you in the previous video how to change from degrees to radians. You're just going to multiply each of these by pi over 180 degrees. Now these three are going to be important angles that you're going to see over and over because those are our special angles. 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 45 degrees. So I want you to know that when we're talking about radians, you're going to have to memorize these, but you'll see them often enough that you, you won't really be memorizing. It's just going to come naturally. Pi over 6, pi over 3, and pi over 4 are going to be those special angles that we see in radians now. Now the last question, if I wanted to add these, we're going to treat them just like fractions. So this would be like one whole pi and that would be like one-sixth of a pi. So when I treat them like fractions, I want a common denominator. Okay, so I would want both of these guys to be sixes and multiply this one by six, so I do the same to the top. Six over six is just one, so I got that one pi right there. But now I can add the tops, so I got seven pi over my common denominator of six. So this is seven-sixths of a pi. All right, I'm just going to leave that other one there and you can go through it yourself. But here's another thing that hasn't really changed. So when we talk about drawing any of these angles, we're still going to use the quadrants. This is still quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. We still start off in standard position and this is where your initial arm is going to go. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to open up to whatever angle you're trying to draw and that'll be where your terminal arm ends up. Okay, so uh, before we would say this is zero degrees, this is 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. But since we're gonna convert everything to radians, just multiply each of those by pi over 180, and then you're still gonna get zero. You're gonna get pi over two as your 90 degrees, pi as your 180 degrees, 3 pi over 2 as your 270 degrees, and then 2 pi as your 360 degrees. So a way to remember this is just, if you're going to open up halfway to the circle, that's going to be 1 pi. If you're only going to open up like half of that pi, well, that's pi over 2. 3 halves would be over here, 3 over 2 pi. And then if this was 1 pi, then going all the way around should be 2 pi, shouldn't it? All right, so again, those are going to be very natural after you use them for quite a while. Okay, now this should be very familiar to you. Let's just say that I decided I'm going to open up 20 degrees. Well, I would open up 20 degrees and my terminal arm would end up in quadrant one. So then theta would just be 20 degrees. Well, if 20 degrees was right here, how would I have known how much it opened up to end up in the second quadrant? Well, I would have to take 180 degrees minus your 20 degrees. So I'd go all the way around 180, and then I would subtract the 20 to see where I ended up. Now, these types of rules are going to be pretty much the same for radians, except instead of the 180 degrees, I'm now going to write pi. So we're just changing the 180 degrees to pi, and then 360 degrees to 2 pi. So let me show you this one. 
like I said, if this is 20 degrees, well then its reference angle down here would be 20 degrees. That means, well, how much would I have to open up all the way so that I would end up right here? Normally, you would have gone 360 degrees, subtract 20. See? Well, it's going to be exactly the same in radians. 2 pi, subtract, and then whatever 20 degrees is in terms of radians. Okay, so right there. I'm going to show you some examples of this in a separate video, but I just want to go over the concepts in this video. Remember that when we did regular trig from grade 10, sine, cos, and tan, so you got your so, ka, and your toa, then we had our things that we learned in grade 11, which are the reciprocals. We have cosecant, which is 1 over sine, so instead of opposite over hypotenuse, we're just going to have that flipped upside down secant which is 1 over cos that means h over a and then cotangent which is 1 over tan and instead of opposite over adjacent we have adjacent over opposite so these are going to play out again in grade 12 cast rule we remember the cast rule okay c starts down here in quadrant 4 a in quadrant 1 s in quadrant 2 and then t in quadrant 3 or if that's like a weird order, instead of thinking about the cast rule, you can always think of the ASTC rule. So start off in quadrant one, and here's something that might help you remember all students take calculus. Okay? So the reason why we have the cast rule is it tells us which of the trig um, ratios is actually positive in each of those quadrants. So for instance, all sine, cos, and tan fractions will be this all positive in this um, quadrant. Only sine will be positive here, only tan will be positive here, and then only cos will be positive here. All right. So the cast rule doesn't change when we're talking about radians, but I just want to explain all of this. Okay, it's just written in radians instead. So instead of the 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360, I've changed them all to the radians already. And uh, I'll just tell you what this one says right here. Sine is greater than 0 or positive right in this quadrant and this quadrant. Okay, so what they're saying is when theta is from 0 to pi over 2, so that's what this is saying, and sine is also positive from pi over 2 to pi. Notice that they have the round brackets because sine is not positive when it lands exactly on each of these lines. Okay, so it's just written instead in radians in this slide. Now the very last thing I want to talk about are those special triangles. Remember those? Like there was an isosceles triangle, which is this guy, and then there's also that scalene, which is this guy. Okay, the isosceles, easy to remember. I mean, it's the same angle on both sides, so that means the same side lengths. And then this guy, you can just, if you don't remember it, use Pythagorean theorem. 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, and then square rooted is root 2. This one's a little bit trickier to remember, so this is what I normally do. The smallest angle, which is uh, 30 degrees, is going to be opening up to the smallest length. Okay, so that's the 1. Then the medium angle, which is 60 degrees, is going to open up to the medium length, which is root 3, and that's about 1.7, so I know that that's like a little, it's in between the 1 and the 2. And then the 90 degrees, which is the largest angle, is going to open up to the hypotenuse, which is the largest side, and that is the 2. Now, that's grade 11. We're going to switch everything to radians. There you go. This is 45 degrees, pi over 4, and pi over 4. So those don't change, right? And then you got your 30 degrees. We're going to write that as a pi over 6. And then the pi over 3 is going to be our 60 degrees. So you see, nothing really changes um, other than the fact that we're just converting between the degrees and the radians. Okay, so check out my next video. We're going to go over some examples.